Jimmy K here, Metal Voice. Look at this. The Metal Voice shirts are now on sale. Just go to the video description to find out on how you can purchase one. Metal! Praise your metal voice! Praise your metal voice! Praise your metal voice! Praise your metal voice! Welcome to the Metal Voice once again. The one, the only. And I always say that, the one, the only. People get mad when I say one, the only, but I don't care. Mr. David Reese, what's going on? Greetings, everybody. Nice to be back. Our yearly chat. Yes, yeah. yes, I'm get, yes. I'm getting used to this, man. Uh, I think it's more than a yearly. Actually, last time has been a year. But anyways, the good news. Yep. A former Accept David Reese has teamed up with ex-Udo Sinner guitarist Andy Susmili to record a Susamir. full-length album. Cacophony of Souls. Did I pronounce that properly? Cacophony yes, of yeah. Souls. Joining them on the effort, which is due on March 13th via El Puerto Records, are bassist Malti Frederick Burkert <laughs> and drummer uh -huh. Andre Giangeli. Right. Giangeli. 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 Andrea Giangeli. So, I mean, a very exciting news. The new album, Cacophony of Souls, again, coming out March 13th. A single to be released February 14th, correct? Yes, correct. And correct, it correct. is The Metal Voice. The Metal Voice. <laughs> Ironically. <laughs> I mean, and for all you people who are tuning in today, you'll hear a snippet at the beginning of the show. And I'm thinking, should I play the whole song at the end of the show? I'll play a little bit more at the end of the show. Not all of it. Yeah. This way we could yeah. build up the suspense for February 14th. Lyric video coming out for... The metal voice. The metal voice. All right, so right off the bat, I've heard this album, and, I, and I, actually I'll give my review right now. I mean, I give this route. I, I am completely shocked at how good this album is. Not to say that you couldn't come up with a great album, but last time around, you had a phenomenal album. And this time, I didn't think you could top it. I thought maybe you could do yeah. the same, but you have actually topped it. And I'm not just saying that. This is a well-crafted album. Uh, in terms of songwriting album um anyways, on. Let, let's talk about it i i talked enough let's let, i want to hear tell me what you did this time and i always ask people this question because i think it's it's pretty relevant what did you do this time versus the last time in recording okay. this album or writing this album all right as you said you got the x except guy you got the x studio guy yeah. andy and i met in 88 at Dirk Studios, and being the black sheep of both organizations, we just kind of, what are you going to do tonight? Let's go to the pub. And around the corner every night was called Marlena's, uh, Anno 1900, Anno 1900, which means that's when it was established. So we go in there and get pissed every night, and we were kind of the guys that they weren't sure of, of course, and we just bonded. And uh, they were working on Mean Machine, I believe. Yeah. Yeah. And I, in the studio next to us. So we just hung out every night. And Andy and I, incidentally, have done probably five albums prior to this. Yeah. Fast forward to uh, 2019. As many people know, I, I was a special guest on the UDO tour, Steel Factory. And Andy is uh, a resident of the southern area of Germany called Ulm. So we played Stuttgart. And, of course, I invited him and uh, Udo had invited him. And above the stage is a, a restaurant area in this venue, and you could look down and see the performances. So there he was, hugged, said, hey, what's up? Been a couple of years. And, you know, we talk on and off on the Internet. And he had this face, I mean, this long, depressed face. I said, well, what's wrong? And he said, I saw your set. I should be on stage with you. Mm -hmm. uh, this is, I, I, I don't belong where I am, I, I you know. And the whole time I'd been considering working with him again, but he's got a pretty, pretty successful solo career going. And uh, so we ended up going to his house and spending the night and hanging and talking about old times, good times, new times and, and blah, blah, blah. So in the back of my head, I was clicking. So when you mentioned this album topped Resilient Heart, I, I did a lot of studying on that Udo tour. And what I mean by that is uh, when you see Udo live, which you have multiple yeah, times, yeah, yeah. There, there are song structures, tempos, uh, certain choruses, things that they say that click with the audience. 
So I would make an effort to watch him nearly every night and just absorb what was happening because he's been doing it for, what, 50 years. So um, during that tour, <clears throat> I started realizing that that guitar lineup wasn't really working for me. And I know how great Andy is. Yeah. So after the tour, I just said, hey, I want to write an album with you, do another solo album. Are you interested? He said, right now. You know, the team that you built on the new yeah. album versus the last album. And that's, that's pretty much yeah. the answer. I was forced into that, that last, that effort. And it wasn't, you know, it wasn't like, well, force is a, a strong word, but the label at the time said, okay, we'll sign you, but we want you to work with this guy and that guy. And it was conditional. And I was kind of like, man, I got to do this. So Marco Angioni was kind of thrown at me because he had his own studio. And then Martin, the other guitar player, was brought in because they worked together on another project. And not, they're great songwriters. I mean, we, we, we wrote really well together. But I had already written prior to that Two Coins and a Dead Man, Karma, and uh, a few other ideas. Actually, Cacophony of Souls I had started working on in those days. Um, so we had that layout. But then I said, this is where I want to go with it, Resilient Heart. And we did. But it just didn't have that. You know, that that thing, that punch, it's got a little more blues feel to it, resilient. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Compared to Cacophony. Well, so yeah. watching Andre and, and, and uh, the other guy every night, those guitar players, that young blood, I realized that was the missing link to David Reese. Yeah, well, I, 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 could, I, I, I could say this much. Sorry to cut you off. This is a heavy metal album. But, I mean, yeah. it is versatile. It's not strictly one sort of beat or one sort of style it sort of stretches that heavy metal from like the mid pace to the fast to the slow and it's, yeah. it's a nice variety it's a nice variety yeah I, well that the thing about andy and i is a lot of times I'll, I'll be watching television like we've talked about before and I'll, somebody will say something and i'll just start writing a story and uh i'll sing the chorus and i'll put it on the phone and send it to andy what do you think of this Give me a couple minutes, and he'll write back a flesh out of a rip. But I told him right away, I said, Andy, we've got to go back to where we came from. Because when I played the Udo tour, when I would do Ecstasy, D-Train, Hellhammer, and Generation Clash, the crowd would, woof, would lift up. And they knew it. Of course, there was a lot of them standing back, you know, folded arms. Oh, you're the guy that destroyed us, except, you know, we're not sure. But I, for the most part, it was fairly successful for me. So I absorbed that as well. And then when you go to the merch booth and talk to everybody, they're like, could you, would you go back to Reese? That's where we got to know you. Yeah, yeah. So I made that emphatically clear with Andy. I said, we've got to do what we did because that's who we are. All right. And cool. uh, it was crazy. And tempos. And like you said, it's a colorful album. And it's not just every track. Yeah, yeah. Which, and you know, it's refreshing. I guess maybe because you're a little older and a little wiser, and uh, you're not trying to prove a point. You're just trying to craft uh, good songs. And we'll go through the songs, yeah. too. Um, yeah. And, okay, we'll start off with the metal voice because, you know, it, it's, you know, first the show, right? Yes. <laughs> so, you know, it's basically uh, an anthemic, uh, and probably now people have heard it because it started the whole show, but it's more of an anthemic uh, sing-along song and a show. And, yeah, it's catchy, melodic, and it's the first single. So just talk to me about that for just quickly. I, you know, Jimmy, in all honesty, that had nothing to do with your show. Yeah. I mean, I I had lyrics and stuff laying around, and I sent that stuff to Andy, and he came up with the title, Raise Your Metal Voice. Yeah. And that's how it was ori originally. And I threw in the hay stuff because back again to watching, you know, the bigger shows that I do, you know, you've got to have it inclusive with the audience, something that they can lock on to. Mm -hmm. So... You know, I said right away, you know, Jimmy and the fans are going to go up. You know, we're sucking up to the Metal Boys show. And I said, no, we're not. <laughs> you know, it just happened. I well, mean, it was now I'm insulted. Know. Oh, there we go. Interview's over. I'm just kidding. For, as time progressed and I sent you the song, you were like, wow, Dave, this is cool. Yes. And is. I said, yeah, this is cool. Yeah. So that, that just kind of, you know, came out of the air, you know, as a title from Andy and fit what I was talking about. And um, became our, our, our first, we actually played the song. We played uh, when Martin and Marco left the band. 
would be March of last year, I think, April. Yeah. They, uh, we immediately started working on stuff. And uh, God, I don't know where I'm going with this. I just had to. I don't to, know where you're going you know, with this either. It just went, forget it, forget it. It'll come back. All but, right. um, uh, oh, uh-huh. we started playing. Uh, we, we, we start, I had contracted a bunch of shows in June and to November. And we had written a, a lot of these songs. And uh, I said, let's play Metal Voice and another one we'll talk about and see what happens. And the crowd, I actually filmed every one of those festivals. There's nine or ten, ten big shows. Yeah. And we included that in the video with the arms in the air, the hay, with the lyric and stuff. So it worked perfect. And everybody said, is this where you're going? And I said, yep. Collective anesthesia. Now that, ah. you know, now... If you listen to that song, you know, there's a there's a sort of a, a nod to Iron Maiden. If any huge Iron Maiden fans out there, like the double guitar harmonies plus the bass doing the third harmony and yep. sort of like a little grinder at the beginning. But man, yep. oh man, what, you know, then it changes gear and it's completely not Iron Maiden. But I mean, I could even hear Bruce Dickinson singing that, not to say that you couldn't sing it. I'm just saying it's it's, it's a Thank nod. You. It's a nod. It's, it's just not Maiden, but it's a nod to Maiden, I would say. You know, let me tell you how that happened. Yeah. Uh, Melta, the bassist, he and I have done four or five albums together and toured extensively all over Europe. And I never knew that he was a writer. And typically what happens when I go to Hamburg where he lives, I'll usually get there a day earlier, earlier in the day and I'll go to his house. And he's a night guy. So... I'm like, please don't talk, Malta. I have to sleep. We have to get up early and travel tomorrow. But he walk, was walking around his house with an old Gibson Explorer playing songs. And he's telling me, you know, I, I've i been on a lot of your albums. I've toured with you, but I never get a chance to write. Would you be interested in hearing anything? And, of course, I'm pretending to be interested, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> and he's walking around playing collective anesthesia musically. And I immediately woke up and I said, is that yours? And he said, yeah. Well, the, the difference with Malta is he's got about 10 years youth on me. He grew up as a Maiden fanatic. He's a Megadeth fanatic. So if you listen to that track, all of those elements are in there. I said, you wrote that? And he said, yeah. So Andy and I basically put the lyric on top of that. And I got to give kudos to Andy because he arranged it. I mean, he, he dissected it and, and made it what it is. Yeah, um, but that's Malta's that's Malta's songwriting ability, and and uh, he's got another one we'll talk about that he wrote musically on the record. But he's it's nice to know that he's got that talent. Oh yeah, know? and yeah. he's I got mean, that it, it, again. It's it's like a nod, but at the same time, it's not absolutely. right. Absolutely. It, but at just the beginning, you go, oh, this is Steve Harris here, but then it just yeah. switches gears, and it's a, yeah. a super melodic chorus, which is is very important. The kids yeah. today, take yeah. note, please. Okay, Cacophony yeah. of Souls, the title track. Now here, you know, rah, 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 rah. now you're actually using a lot of your uh, your vocal ability. And then, you know, you're going down to a bass, you know, sort of bass, yeah. baritone, tenor. You're singing in the bass range here, at least at the mm. start of it, you know, yeah. which is really cool because you're really stretching vocally on this album. Uh, not to say you haven't in the past, but especially on this song. Cacophony uh, of Souls, great song, another great tune. Thank you. Um, I wrote that with Martin Frank, who I mentioned earlier. He did a couple tracks with me on Brazilian Heart. And it, you know, Live, Bef- Live Before You Die, I, I kind of used that vocal low build up into the big chorus. Um, I wrote Cacophony sitting on the toilet, to be honest. I oh, mean, it there just, you go. he said, yeah, something he said, we he just said, don't want to know. <laughs> you don't, you don't need, on a no, no need basis, but I get a lot of inspiration in that little quiet space, right? But uh, he had sent me that riff and, uh, all of it was done excluding the solo. Yeah. And Martin was like, yeah, I'll write a solo. And I said, Andy, you write the solo. So he took it in that different direction, but it glued it all together. So I, I thank you for noticing the, the vocal thing. I think it's important that a lot of singers, you don't blow your load on the first verse, you know, and guys, certain singers out there that I admire, you know, they, they creep up into showing what it is. And when it comes to the chorus, boom, let them have it. Yeah. So yeah, that was that was the the, the whole intention of that that song. All right. And it, and it's uh, cacophony of souls basically is you know what is going on if you're anybody's got half a brain, it the way people are behaving and then there's this quagmire of people and and behavior that that's what it's about. 
um, it just fell. It just fell. Those are the best ones, I think. Yeah. yeah. Okay, here, here's another. We're not going to do every single track, but we'll go through them um, as many as we can. And another impressive track is Another Life, Another Time. And I'll tell you why it's impressive. Because it falls into the ballad category or the slow song category. Whereas the chorus and the verse are so melodic and catchy. And the music goes so well with them that you could picture this instead of in, in some sort of inspirational movie soundtrack. I go, wow, I could, I could picture wow. this in some sort of movie. Maybe on the Titanic 2 or something. I don't know. But... Uh, pitch it, pitch it, Jimmy. Take it. <laughs> <laughs> the Titanic that 2. Song, <laughs> the return. That song you know? was... Yeah. <laughs> Maybe we should put the politicians on the front while it's sinking there and all these go. people yeah. that are, you know. But uh, that song lyrically came together my wife i like to drag her along if she'll go because mm -hmm. you know she's in the early days she loved it you know being backstage but now uh have a good time it's kind of boring for somebody to hang around while you're doing your job but of course uh we were in bulgaria and i was doing some live gigs with john Steele, and i always like to fly with her and sit next to her you know and share the experience but this particular flight home we were separated with a guy in the middle <laughs> So we were leaning around each other, you know, trying to understand each other with the, all the noise. And she said, ah, another life, another time. And click, there goes the title. So I, I write it down, um, send it to Andy. And he's one thing about Andy is he not only a great rock guitar player, he, he he's influenced by Gary Moore and all those guys and Schenker especially. And then, you know, he just took that to the next level. And when we started recording the vocals, he had this beautiful, I don't know who made it, a nylon string electric guitar and this vast, you know, collection of guitars. He must have 100 guitars in his house. Mm -hmm. And I said, what is that? And he goes, that's the guitar I'm going to use in another life and another time and another song. And I went, let me hear it. So he just strummed it. And it was so beautiful. And... Um, yeah, Andy, I, I got to give him so much credit. I mean, I mean, he I'll give him producer credit, which he has arranger credit and he mixed it. I mean, not only being a great one of the most underrated guitar players in the world. Yeah. You know, he is really, really what made me shine on the album. I have I have to give him the credit. All right. Here's the next one. The last one, because it's it's hard to talk about songs and people to watch this if they don't if they haven't heard the album. Right. So I don't want to mm -hmm. I don't want to drive people crazy too much. Back in the days, which is, you know, I guess it, it, it's it's self-explanatory. Right. In terms of yeah. uh, of, of words. <clears throat> but this is probably and, and the reason why I'm pointing this song out is if, you know, back in the day, you had to pick that single to be released on the radio or the video. That would be the song. That would be the the track. That would be the the song that the company is the record company is pushing. So, yep. back in the days, you want to talk about that? Uh, you know, uh, I, I have to be honest. Is you know, eat the heat, and then when I left, except I went directly to California and signed Bangalore Choir. I had an offer by nine labels, yeah, major labels in in a year, and. I retained, also, when I was doing a lot of those Udo shows and my own shows, I see on target pretty much every show I do. And I actually just uh, had it, re I'm having it re-released on vinyl um, this year. I had the momentum after Accept, Bangalore Choir on target. It's, everybody says that album, had it been released two or three years before, would have been a smash. I had the, the whole mechanics. Yeah, I had yeah, White Snakes yeah. manage. You know the story. Yeah, I know the story. Um, Nine, 89, 90, it was over. But uh, that, that's got a lot of Bangalore choir. And, and the past, back in the days, da 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 da. I wrote that with uh, Martin Frank, again, the guy that wrote uh, the music for Cacophony of Souls. And you're one of about 20 people that have said the same thing. That would have been the one the record company reached out and said, There's our single. Yeah. yeah and yeah. Uh, especially the Canadians and the Americans, they're the ones that really grabbed that one. Because we're we're more <laughs> that's the way they sort of treated us back then. That's the single. That's the one. That's yep. the one's gonna play in the radio. You know, yep. uh, that's what we're yep. gonna push. Um, mm -hmm. That's the North American sort of attitude, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. So so I mean, I don't want to go through everything because uh, again, people haven't heard it yet. But just to give everybody an overall picture, again, it's more versatile. It's way more metal. A lot of riff heavy stuff, um, and I think most 
people who like hard rock and heavy metal will probably really enjoy this, especially if people enjoy well-crafted and good, great singing. And the guitar work is great, too. There's a lot of great solos. I think there's even a bass yeah. solo in one of the songs. I think yeah. it's over and over. Mm -hmm. There's a bass yeah. solo there. So there you go. It, it, it's, it's you know, definitely something worth picking up. I mean, and we're not going to stop here. I'll ask you some non-album questions now. Um, okay. I was thinking about this the other day. You know, you went on tour with Udo. Yep. Uh, you guys had that, you know, you guys have a good relationship. Uh, hopefully we'll see more dates. I don't know what the future lies for you and Udo now. If uh, Hopefully we could see more dates together. Uh, I know he's, I'm sure he's coming into North America at this time around. Uh, what's the possibilities of uh, you joining up with him, North America or in Europe? Is, is there talks or well, not yet? There always is. Um, yeah. I know he's going to do Metal Heart uh, Anniversary, yeah. and I just saw it today. Baltus is in on that. Really? Uh, yeah. He's doing Vakken with Baltus and Kaufman. Is that today um, that it was announced? Yeah, I saw it on Facebook today, and it's all mm. these little secret things, you know, just photos mm. of Peter and, and Udo live. And then I'm gonna there's, post that after. This, there's a military guy. They're doing some type of military orchestra involved. I, I'm not really sure the details, but... He's in the photo, and everybody's, ah, oh, there's Peter. He's rearing his beautiful head again. Um, so I, I think Pete's on stage. He says special surprises, but it, it's pretty obvious. I know he's doing that. Um, I'm in contact with uh, all of the guys in the band all the time. I'm in contact with their manager. That tour went really smooth. Um, I was actually given 10 days to start. And then after about the third show, they asked me if I would add on four shows. I said, yeah. And then about a week later, they said, will you do Scandinavia? And the money was a lot better. And I'm like, this is working. And it was a smooth transition. I mean, you know, it was a little weird at first because we, you know how we met on that tour. I think I told you that. Yeah, I yeah, was, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was in the bathroom doing my vocal scales and I hear this Mr. voice. Reese. Shut up. Shut up. Reed. Stop <laughs> it. What are you doing? And I'm like, I'm not like him. I mean, the guy just wakes up and, and he plays Candy Crush on his iPhone and like puts the phone down and walks on stage and sounds the same every night. It's pretty mean, cool. Every night. Yeah. 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 I mean, it's pretty cool. Dude. Bullet, it's bulletproof. I mean, so he told me to shut up and uh, then we <laughs> hugged and on Facebook is that that. When we were in the bathroom, I took that picture. He's hugging me. I'm hugging him. And he actually was kind of hinting around that he was talking to Peter in the bathroom. So I got you, Udo. I yeah. kind of knew what was going on. <laughs> so it, basically, Udo has morphed into accept, right? Or the other way around. Accept has yeah. morphed into Udo. I asked him. I said, are you going back to the band? And, of course, I can't say what he said, but there's a lot of details. I said, are you guys going to do a reunion? What's going on? And he just looked at me and he said, Dave, I'm, I'm really happy. And he's really successful. So this, this is the big question here. And I've asked this question to the Iron Maiden guys, right? Uh, the Iron Maiden singers. I asked Paul Diano. I asked Blaze Bailey. I go, would you do a Maiden Fest? And, and you know, they're, they're of course, they're, they would love that idea, right? That'd be cool if they were offered. I, I could only see the same thing happening here, you know? Uh, yeah. I don't know if we call it an accept fest, but we can call it an accept fest where, you know, you have Wolf, who's basically the sole member left in accept. Uh, and of course, Mark, who's, who does a great job. And don't get me yeah, wrong. Yeah. And then you have Udo and his gang with Peter, I guess, now. And you, you know, doing this. I, I think this tour would kick ass. I mean, everybody plays yeah. their eras and then you could play all together. Would you be open to doing an accept fest? Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, even if I did like they do with Shanker Fest, what do they do? Four or five songs each yeah, from yeah. the history? Yeah. I mean, why not? I mean, because, you know, you, you've got this weird the dynamic of my part, my tenure with the band that they either hate my guts or they love me. But as the years, if you see over to my left shoulder here, that gold album is Eat the Eat. I didn't know I had it. That's yeah. the four song one, that, yeah. by the way, with, that they put out. Uh, which was given to me by a fan in Sweden. But there's there are people out there that talk to me every day that that's their favorite Accept album. So if the powers that be could set aside any animosity and all those stupid things that are involved, we could do it for the fans. I would I would ride in my own rent-a-car just to do, like, 
the four or five classics that people recognize me from from that era. I would love it. And then maybe at the end of the night, we could all get together anthemically and do, uh, you know, balls or, or something like that. You know, yeah, that would be killer. That would be great. Oh, yeah. I mean, you could just have one backing band and you could have all the singers and, of course, Wolf there and Peter. And I don't you know. Bring I, Andy. You could bring Andy in. You could. Sure. I mean, I know when, when Udo was 60th birthday, when he played Bakken, he invited all the former members to join him. And 100,000 people sang happy birthday to the guy. Insane. I mean, and An Andy played guitar on that show on a couple of the songs from his era. And he said it was I, he can't even express what he said it was like an ocean of people singing to Udo and playing those songs again with that band. I think he had that lineup on stage for a couple songs. Yeah, I, th I but, think the uh, Schenker thing is great, but I think this would be even better because uh, I don't know why. I don't know why. I just I think the Schenker thing maybe is just too much versatility, even though I loved it. But this would be that I think there'd be more similarities. That's what I'm getting at. You well, know, with Jimmy, Udo, with Mark Tornillo you, and yourself, you know, you you were strongly instrumental in getting me on the Steel Factory tour. I mean, you as soon as you we I think we did the interview for Resilient and Heart. You said, Dave, get a hold of Udo. And it was weird that day that I, after I talked to you, I called Frank Supla, the manager, and he said, I was just talking about you 10 minutes ago. Wow. So all the, I'm serious. And the stars all lined up and he said, okay, I got these 10 dates. You want them? I said, of course. What a great way to promote, to promote a new album, with, especially with Udo. Just the curiosity that, you know, the ex except singers are sharing a tour together. Okay, so you I'll know. do my magic again. You ready for this? Yeah, do your magic. Yeah, I waiting. think there should be <laughs> an accept fest. Call up the powers yeah. that be. I think they're talking about you right now. <laughs> well, I mean, the festivals would pick up on it. Absolutely. Yeah. It wouldn't have to be, you but, know, slugging it out. But you know what? I think, I think it's... See, the festivals, they'll take the bands regardless. They'll take accept. They'll take Udo. And, and don't get me wrong. It's, it's a great idea for the festivals, like a headliner or maybe a co-headliner. Oh. But I think since it's so difficult in North America to sort of break tours and, and to get the people out, I think this is a perfect way to get everyone out, you know, because you'll get this is, and, and your show has got so much mass appeal. I mean, so, there's somebody out there that, that sees this interview is going to go. That's a good idea. The promoters and would love make, it. Yeah. yeah. Get the get the context going. I mean, those you people out there that are thinking about this right now. I mean, I'm open. You find me on Facebook. I'm I'm in. I mean, I can get on a plane and play with the backing band. I mean, there's there's no. I saw Peter in Milan when he was in Accept still. Yeah. Smiling. And things were cool. I haven't spoken to Wolf for thirty something years, but that's okay. I mean, I mean, how how often did Michael Shaker spend time with Graham Bonnet and the other guys? I mean, honestly, it's it, it was like it's a collective history of his life. I mean. You know, you don't talk to each other for a while and then you say, hey, and you respectively play the songs that were great. And then you go back to your room and, and get up and go to work. I mean, yeah. it's yeah, I mean, it's 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 work at the end of the day. And, and you know what? Maybe yeah. it'll 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 bond everybody together once again, something like this, which is yeah, cool. It's, too, it's, right? it's cool. Let's water into the bridge. Come on. I mean, I respect those guys. I mean, I mean, I respect Wolf as a guitar player. Who doesn't? I mean, look yeah. what he's done. Yeah. I mean, look at look at Mark. I mean, look how well he's done. About you know, from all the changes that had gone on, Mark has survived this and done a great job. You know, I saw him in Milan, like I said, and Rise of Chaos had just come out, and I, I can say that kid walked on stage himself. I think they did uh, was it Fast as a Shark as an opener, but then they went in right away to, to the new album, and the, the Italian fans were singing the words to those songs. Yeah. So he was he was part of the of the group. You know what I mean? They knew it. Dave, they don't play except doesn't play in north america anymore or like they used to that's what i'm trying to say not to say they yeah. don't play they don't come around and, and of course it must be because they're getting more audience support in europe versus in north america but here's a great way to get that yeah. audience back and get the excitement and the and you know the, yeah. the the sort of uh what do you want to call it the excitement that's what it is it's just getting the yeah. excitement back right i mean and in america for everybody not just accept i mean God, I, I don't know how many people say, when are you touring the States? You know, well, yeah. I could do the East Coast for 10 shows and go, excuse me, and go home. 
Or I could go to the West Coast and do two to ten shows. But you know, viably, it's 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 yeah, insane. It's, it's insane, insane. And you, you you have to have something like an accept fest. You know, you, you, that's that would bring the curiosity of the history of the band. What 35, 40 years of the of the band's life. Um, so there we have it. Uh, Cacophony of Souls, uh, March thirteenth, El Puerto Records. Uh, yep. Definitely worth something checking out and picking up and support. Support the artist, you know, buy the record or yeah. buy the digital download, however you want to do it. And, and I mean, I add, I've, I've got a lot of shows coming up for this tour. Okay, I've, throw uh, them out if you got them. I got uh, March starting in Germany on the 13th, release yeah. day in uh, Kreuz Obermachtal, and the second day, the 14th, at a place called Traube Bellenberg in Germany, kind of a home base for El Perto Records. Um, I played there a few times. Uh, both clubs have always been great. And then in April, starting the fourth, I've got um, a week of a week in a row of UK dates, um, and uh, doing that. And then May, I've got a bunch of other European dates, and into June, into Spain, and everything like that. And I'm I'm hustling right now for festivals for the summer. Everybody and their brothers on a waiting list on that. So it's it's a good kickoff. And then the fall. I'm going to do uh, a, a special festival in Hamburg uh, for just the Bangalore Choir on Target album. Cool. I'm going to play that, and then I'm going into Scandinavia and, and continuing with Cacophony of Souls. Great album. I'm, I'm happy to be back with El Puerto because why? They work with the artists. They promote it. And Giles Lavery, my manager, is doing a great job. And, I, uh, I mean, we talk every day. So I, I, I just thank the fans and, and give it a shot. I mean, I, I got to say I was inspired by the UDO tour and also when Priest came out and slapped us upside the head with firepower. I mean, I went, OK, <laughs> OK, start singing, Reese. You know what I mean? You're a metal singer, you got a little blues influence, but apply that. And all the guys stepped up to the plate on this record and I couldn't be more pleased. And let's not forget the metal voice. And here's the, the whole voice. song. Here's the whole song. The insp and we'll the call video. it the inspiration. The inspiration. Yeah. Yes. And this is dedicated to you, Jimmy, and thank you for all you do. Mm -hmm.